Hi, my name is Randall Allen Loy, and I'm a reproductive medicine specialist in Orlando, Florida. And today we're going to be talking about the usual suspects. What are the usual or typical blood tests that will be ordered to help define your care? First, I'd like to tell you a story. A few years ago, a very nice couple in their late 30s came in to see me. They're new infertility patients. And after some pleasantries, I said, well, tell me, how long have you been trying to get pregnant? And the husband said, well, we're really not here about that problem. We're here about another problem. And I said, okay, well, what's the problem? He said, it's your overhead. And I said, my overhead? How would you know about my overhead? He said, well, you have a huge laboratory staff. You're spending all this money on all the laboratory equipment. He said, I present my wife. She is the world's foremost pheromonologist. I said, pheromonologist, what is that? He said, are you not familiar with pheromones and you call yourself an endocrinologist? I said, yeah, pheromones are those things that animals excrete or secrete and are picked up by other animals. He says, my wife is better than that. She's like the world's best bloodhound. She can smell when a woman is on her period. She can smell when a woman is about ready to ovulate. She can smell when implantation is taking place. So you could do away with all of your laboratory staff and just hire my wife. He said, I think her going price is going to be around $250,000. I said, that's a lot of money. He said, we've already talked to your competition across town who's offering us $200,000. I said, well, do you have any objective data? Have you published anything on this? Do you know, I mean, any way that I can verify what you're saying is true? He said, why do you need data? He said, you have my wife. You don't trust us? I said, well, it is a little bit curious, don't you think? And he says, not at all. I said, well, give me some data. At which point he became miffed and he says, come on, honey. Let's get out of here. This man has no mind for business. And that was the end of the pheromonologist. Well, in our clinic, we still use blood tests. And today I'm going to be talking to you about those blood tests. This is a little bit busy, so I'm not going to ask you to remember all of this. There's no pop quiz at the end. But I do want to familiarize you with the concepts that the pituitary and the ovaries and other endocrine organs have to be in sync for conception to occur. Now we're going to focus on this diagram, which is a Frank Netter drawing of the human menstrual cycle. As a woman is having her period, a number of changes are happening in the ovary. In fact, these follicles, these little egg-containing cysts, are getting ready. One of these will become queen of the hill and will become dominant about day seven of the menstrual cycle. That will then continue to grow, and day 14 or so of the 28-day cycle, that egg will be released. Now notice what's happening concurrently in the uterine lining. It's getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and then it actually maxes out after ovulation because this egg, if fertilized, is not gonna make its way into the uterine lining until about day 21 or 22 for implantation. So we look at not only what's happening with the ovaries, but what's happening also with the uterine lining. Now concurrent with that, we have changes in the pituitary and this is luteinizing hormone which is important for making androgens in the ovary and follicle stimulating hormone which as its name implies stimulates follicles so we look at these especially on day two or three or four of the cycle as one index of ovarian reserve in other words how many eggs do you have left we have an episode coming up in a few weeks talking about ovarian reserve tests so if you're interested in that please come back and we'll talk much more about ovarian reserve now another test that we might perform, and it's cycle independent, which means that we can get it on any day of the cycle, is so-called anti-mullerian hormone, or AMH. Anti-mullerian hormone is the product of all of those granulosa cells, the ones that nourish the egg. And it is another index of how many eggs a woman has left. It varies throughout a woman's entire lifetime, peaking out around age 20. Other tests that we might get would be thyroid stimulating hormone or maybe some androgens, and those are things like testosterone, or androstenedione, or DHEAS, which is an adrenal hormone. And that's a weak building block for stronger androgens, such as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Lots of big names, all that doesn't really matter. Your reproductive endocrinologist will know all about these. He or she will know how they vary through your cycle, when to obtain them, and what the results are that are normal. And then you'll be advised what to do if those tests are abnormal. Prolactin is another hormone that we might measure. It's made by the front sides of the pituitary. It's most notably associated with milk production after the baby's born, but it's also very important in terms of ovulation and also implantation and early pregnancy maintenance. If a prolactin level is too high or too low, 
it can adversely impact progesterone levels. We know that progesterone, of course, is very important for maintaining the uterine lining through those first few weeks of pregnancy. Finally, your doctor might want to order a few other tests, including looking at your glucose blood sugar levels and insulin levels. Those will help us know more about ovulation. And then you might be offered genetic screening. If in fact your family has had some genetic defect coming down through the generations, that might be tested. Now, the final test might be so-called prenatal profile labs. Now, what are those? Those would be typically sexually transmitted diseases like hepatitis B and C, HIV AIDS, syphilis, Thrown into that cluster of labs might be a blood type and RH, which would be helpful to your OB once you go back to your doctor pregnant. So as you can see, there are a lot of different things we look at, not just the way you smell. Your doctor knows all of these tests and more, so please check with your reproductive endocrinologist and he or she will get you headed in the right direction. I want to thank you for being with us today. I really appreciate your being a subscriber. If you've not subscribed, please do so. Tell your friends about us and leave comments if you will. Now, if your comments are of a personal nature, email me at the address below. I can't answer those directly, but I will answer those indirectly through future episodes. Thanks so much and I hope to see you back next week.